All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to our fifth product clinic. My name is John Zucker. I run our VUE technical community, and I'm excited to have all of you here today. We are going to dig into the Gigamon product licensing models. And with us today, we have Robert Pena, who is one of our technical success managers who will be hosting our clinic today. Welcome, Robert. Hello, and thank you for joining uh, me today uh, for today's product clinic. My name is Robert Benya. My role is that of technical success manager here at Gigamon. I work with customer success uh, with the customer success team to help clients through their journey within Gigamon. In today's presentation, I will demonstrate how to apply both node lock and floating licenses from within the Gigaview FM. Before we begin applying these licenses, we need to verify some prerequisites are met in your FM environment. Let me share out my screen. So these prerequisites. Is Gigaview FM installed? Can you log in to the FM with admin rights? Have you created a VUE community portal account? Have you logged into that account? Can you access the licensing portal within the community portal account? There, as mentioned earlier, there are two types of licenses available node lock and floating licenses. Node lock licenses are attached to the serial number or the chassis of the line card they are being applied to. Whereas floating licenses are not locked to a specific card or chassis. This means that you can move the license from one node to another as needed to support your organization. A floating license can be applied to either a cloud or a physical device. How do I apply these licenses? Today we will apply the license to a node lock. Uh, we will apply a node lock license to our fabric manager or FM. We will then apply a floating license to a cloud instance, volume-based license, and to a physical device, an HC1. So let's log into the FM and begin licensing. Here's my FM. Let me log into it. As you can tell, I logged into uh, FM using my admin account. Let's double check that we have at least one physical device in good health. Here you can see my physical devices. It's an HC1, as I mentioned earlier. And here you can see health is OK. If health is anything other than okay, please contact support that they, they can help you correct this. Next, how do we apply licenses? So if you see here down the bottom left, you click on settings, scroll down a little bit, you'll see licenses. Here is my main screen for licensing. First thing you see is I'm currently licensed for one node. Oh, but we're applying licenses, but notice, this bottom part section doesn't have anything on it. So it makes me believe that this is just a temporary node, temporary license. You can uh, verify this if you go down into VBL Active. And you'll see right now we're using a core license, a VBL core license, and it's on trial. That's why under FM, under fixed, we don't have anything and it has only one node. So let's go ahead and get the, uh, this node. Uh, the FM license. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here on the right, we're going to click on activate license. This is this screen will be used. You'll see the screen uh, quite a few times when you're licensing. It's going to ask you if you want to apply uh, the IP address and hosting to, to the uh, JSON file that's going to be created. IP address and hosting are helpful on the licensing portal to track what license is applied to which device. So once you decide whether you want to use IP address and hosting, you could click on download fabric inventory JSON. You're going to see it's going to download to your uh, default location on your browser. Next, let's go into our community portal. Here's my community portal. Mine might look a little bit different than yours. 
you might see licensing portal here in the middle, and that's quite okay. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on, I'm gonna click on this tab. For security reasons, I already pre-filled uh, my screen out. But here you could see I have GFM, FM005, FM010. What does that mean? FM can be licensed for one, one device, five devices, 10 devices, up to a thousand devices. You can mix and match the sizes that you are licensing depending on your needs. As your, your environment grows, you can always add additional licenses. Here under description, you can see a description of what the license has. As I mentioned, FM005 is for five physical nodes. Other things of note, you could see license start date. This is when the license became available. And just as important, license end date, when the license will expire. Another thing to note, if you look into quantity, here it shows I have six of 10, which means we originally had 10 licenses available, four have been consumed, I have six currently left. So let's go, go ahead and activate one of these. So all you're gonna do is click on activate. Here it's gonna ask you, is FM gonna, uh, going to uh, manage this node? Yes. And it's gonna ask you to choose a file. We're gonna go into our downloads folder. And here you can see a JSON file that I just downloaded. Go ahead, select that, hit open. Once you open it, it gives you information about your environment. I have a GigaView FM 6.7, the MAC address for the GigaView uh, for FM. I have an HC1 with two cards on it. So that's, that's about right. So we're gonna hit continue. Here you're gonna see it's node locked. We are using version FM version 5.7 later. And as I mentioned earlier, Here's the MAC address for FM instance. So since it's node locked, this is a node locked license. This will be attached to that MAC address. Here, one is one, we're gonna click on review. Again, this is just to review what we're doing. We are activating an FM005 for up to five physical nodes. It's gonna be locked to the MAC address of our FM instance. So go ahead and click activate. Notice here, we have a license key. We're gonna copy this over. You're gonna to wanna to keep this somewhere else, uh, but note also, this is a SKU, that's a MAC address. The license key starts with LK2. Now that we have this key, Let's go back into our FM environment. We were on this screen. We downloaded the JSON file. Next, we're gonna add the FM license. So go ahead, click add FM license. Notice it asks you for the license key. Go ahead, paste this in. Again, node lock licenses always begin with LK2. So now I'm gonna click save. And now you can see that this screen has changed. We have our license key showing up here. Now, instead of showing one, we have a five pack and the state is active. And you could see when your expiration date will be in the future. Okay, now we, we've activated the license for FM. Next, we're gonna activate, that was a, a node lock license. Next, we're gonna activate a floating license for our VBL, volume-based license. We're gonna go under FM and cloud, select VBL active. Right now we have the trial license there, but we wanna activate our VBL license with a commercial license. So go ahead, click activate license. The screen's a little bit different, but it goes to the same, uh, gives us the same results. We're gonna select IP address and host name or your choice and we're gonna download the JSON file. 
Again, it's going to download to the default location of your browser. And here we're going to go back into the portal. Again, I've already pre-populated this uh, due to security reasons, but it gives us the screen, what we need on the screen. Here you can see under description, I have various type bundles of VBL licenses. Uh, we have Security View Plus, we got Core, and we have another Security View. In this case, I'm going to be activating the Core license. Depend which license you purchase will be the ones that show up on your environment. In this case, here you can see it's a 2,500 uh, terabyte per day volume-based license. You have several different flavors of uh, volume. You have 250T, you have 2,500, and several others. Again, here's our start date, our end date of licenses, and the quantity available. So I'm going to activate the core license. Go ahead, click activate. Is this going to be managed by FM? Yes. Same screen that we saw before, we're going to choose our file. Notice now we have two JSON files. You're going to want to select the one that was most up to date, the one that you just downloaded. Go ahead, hit open. This shows us the screen that we had earlier, the MAC address for FM. It's 6.7 uh, version, two line cards, and the MAC address of the HC1. Go ahead, click continue. Notice, now we have option under type, we have floating. It's 5.7. And again, this is the MAC address for the FM. One thing to note, if you just click on quantity and type a number, it won't overwrite the zero. So you might accidentally uh, attempt to activate 10, 20, or 30 quantity. So make sure you overwrite the zero. I'm just going to activate one. I'm going to click on review. Here I'm activating a VBL 2500T core. This gives you the description of what the license has and the uh, MAC address that it will be associated with right now. Remember, a floating license can always be moved to another device. It's not, it's not going to be permanently locked to FM, to this FM instance. And we're activating a quantity of one. Go ahead, click activate. And notice, now we have our SKU, we have our, what it's being locked down to temporarily. But instead of having an LK2 activation key, we have a license key that we can download. Go ahead, click download. It's being downloaded to your default location. Now we have our license key. Let's go back into our FM environment. Here's where we were. We have our JSON. Let's click next. I've already gone to licensing portal. So I'm just going to click next. Now it's going to ask, it's asking me for a choose file. This will be the, uh, the dot license file that we, we just created from the portal. Click on choose file. And here's my license file. Notice now we have two JSON files, one license file. As you progress through the licensing, you might collect quite a few of these. At first, you might want, want to rename them. It's best if you don't rename them completely because that could uh, cause you issues down the road. If you want to, you can add something at the end to just the descriptor what it's for, but that can easily be removed to put it back to its original uh, state. So here I've highlighted my license file. Notice it ends in .lic. I'm going to click on open. Once it's there, once you can see the file there, click on save. Now, under licenses, you could see that I have Here's the original file license I had. And here's my new license. Instead of being one terabyte, now I have 2,500 terabytes. It is, they are both core, 
but you could see the expiration dates. Instead of just having one month, I have one year. And they're they're active. Under years, it probably won't show lab. It'll show commercial. So now we've activated a floating license for our VBL. This allows the environment to start consuming, uh, taking in traffic. Next, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to activate a license for our HC1. To do that, we're still going to remain under settings and licenses. And we're going to go under floating. We're going to go to activate. Notice there's nothing here. We have an HC1 device that's being monitored through, uh, through FM, but it hasn't been activated. So it's a very similar process to what we did for the VBL. Go under activate license. We're going to go with license uh, with portal. I'm going to select IP address and host name. Again, I'm going to download a JSON file. Default uh, default location. Next, we're going to go back to our portal. Here's my license for my uh, HC1 chassis. Again, here's the description. Here's the SKU that you purchased. Start date, end date for your licenses. And again, quantity. I still have three of 10 available. So let's activate one of these HC1 licenses. This is being monitored by FM, Hit yes. We're gonna upload the file. Remember, you're gonna get quite a few of these JSON files. You can delete the JSON files. You can always generate a new one. Don't delete the light, the ones that end in .lic. Go ahead, op hit open on JSON file we just selected. The information we uh, previously seen. In this case, what we're going to it's going to be of interest will be the MAC address for the uh, HC1. Go ahead and hit continue. Notice you can have a node lock and a floating for uh, the HC1. In this case, we're going to select floating. It's version 5.7. And notice now we have this column that we didn't have before. Now we're going to select Gigamon uh, OS. And that's the MAC address it's going to be tied down to. Temporarily, since this is a floating license, this is going to be it can always be moved on your needs. Override the zero with a one or whatever number that you need to down, uh, you need to activate. Click review. Again, we're looking at, at Gigamon, uh, volume uh, HC1 license. You can see it's a software term license for an HC1 chassis. Here's the MAC address that uh, this will be attached to temporarily. And we're going to click activate. And we're only activating one. And it's another license key that we're going to download. Again, it's a floating license. Floating licenses will be downloaded. Whereas node lock licenses will give you node key starting with LK2. I've downloaded my file. And again, similar to the uh, process we followed for the volume base license, we're going to go back into our portal and we're going to import our license key. Select the one that you just downloaded. Again, we've downloaded the volume base license and now the HC1 license. Again, if you want to rename them, attach something at the end. Hit open. And now we're going to hit continue. That's it. It's been successfully uh, activated. Now we're going to go to licenses. And here you can see it's been activated. In your environment, it will most likely say commercial here. But here you can see the SKU that we activated, the description, start and end date, and the activation. Next thing you could do is look at your activations when, when they expire. If you go to uh, expiration, you can see that we have a trial that's expiring in two months. If you go back to uh, cloud, if you look under active, you can see that 
both of them are active. The last thing I want to show you, now that we've licensed our FM, you can see here it's active. And when it expires, we've activated our volume-based license. As we just saw, It's we have 2500T core that expires next year. And we have an HC1 license that will also expire next year. But on your portal, once you activate various licenses, you can go into your portal, it will look like this. Notice on this one, it shows commercial versus lab. You also see when the licenses were, were activated, which the MAC address or line card uh, that the license was activated to. So here you can see where it's locked to. The description. Also, you can see whether it's node locked or if it's floating. All that I'm showing right now are node locked licenses. Of interest is this column here, quantity. How many licenses do I have remaining that can be downloaded? And if you did overwrite the name of your license or you lost it or you forgot where you placed it, you could click download to reinstall license. You could also revoke the license. Remember, a floating license, you can revoke it and you can move it from one device to the next. If you need any help with revoking or moving license, a uh, uh, floating license, please contact uh, customer su uh, support. Again, if you have any problems uh, with licenses, your first call, first email should go to customer support. Again, thank you very much if, uh, for your time today. And we, as we said, as I said earlier, we, today's goal was to show you how to activate various types of licenses within the F, uh, Gigabon uh, FM. Thank you very much. Have a good day.